I'm John Skinner, and this supplements my book, Fishing the Bucktail. In this video, I'll be using one ounce SNS John Skinner Blackfish Porgy Jigs. And uh, these have a slightly smaller hook than you'd normally find in a blackfish jig. Uh, it's designed to sit with the hook uh, pointing up and it's really deadly easy to set the hook on the blackfish. Um, right here I'm baiting it with several or probably three I guess um, small Asian crabs and uh, just gonna drop it to the bottom and I'm just getting started uh, this is my first drop. And this is mid-October uh, Eastern Long Island Sound 27 feet of water. So you saw me flip the jig out a little ways I would prefer to drop it straight down but Looking at my GPS where I've got my marks, I, I think I'm off just a little bit because I, I just anchored up. Um, so, you know, sometimes the kayak or boat doesn't settle exactly how you expect. So you see, I didn't get hit right away. Um, normally I do when I'm right on the structure. So I move the jig just a little bit there. Maybe I'll move it a little bit more um, there. Just moving it just because I didn't get hit for 30 seconds or so. Move it a little bit. Um, and then I feel some taps and uh, get into business. Okay, I'm going to start off with a couple shorts here on this first drop until I figure things out a little bit better. And uh, yeah, but not tiny, uh, but but certainly. Uh, below the 16 inch uh, minimum size limit. As I mentioned in a previous video, uh, if you talk to experienced blackfish anglers, they will tell you, you know, let these fish chew, let them get that bait back to the crushes and all that. Uh, with this jig, I'm just making sure I expose that hook point. Uh, like I mentioned, it's a relatively small hook for blackfish, but it's very strong. Um, and I'm finding it extremely easy to hook the fish with this. I feel those taps and my feeling is if you feel those taps that jigs in his mouth and uh, at that point if you pull back I don't see how you don't get that hook caught on those big lips and those are tough lips and you get that hook set in there and, and it's a firm hook set so I'm not waiting I feel tap 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 and and just set hard and, and really try to bury the hook. Now these jigs are uh, currently available J&H Tackle, Oakdale, Long Island, uh, in the store and online. There's several different weights between uh, 5 eighths and ounce and a half. Now in this 27 foot spot where I do have significant current, um, I've not found it necessary to go above one ounce. All right, at this point of the trip, uh, you know, just getting started, a couple of quick shorts. I'm happy with that. Uh, makes me feel like, yeah, I'm on a decent piece of the structure. And I'll just, you know, try to make a few little wiggles moves on, around it, uh, see if I can find some bigger ones. And this rod is just too much fun. This is a uh, six foot tsunami slow pitch. It's rated for a 15 to 30 pound test line. And I've got a uh, Tsunami Shield 4000 spooled with 20 pound test spider wire stealth braid. And uh, it is a really fun combination uh, for doing this. And yet, you know, it's got power to muscle stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great rod for this kind of fishing.
Okay, so that's a keeper, and I do want to bring home a, a fresh meal this trip. And uh, I've brought along my Canyon cooler bag, and I think this is a B32. They make all kinds of sizes. Uh, this is the same one that I'll use uh, for fluke. And uh, I think it's actually called like a fluke flounder uh, blackfish bag or something like that. Um, perfect for this kind of stuff, and it's kind of convenient that it floats. Uh, when I go out fluking and I'm drifting and I keep paddling, I'll uh, keep sticking it back behind me in the tank well. But for this, uh, I'm just going to let it float. Um, I've got some frozen gel packs in there. And uh, this thing, <laughs> so how, how about controlling the fish, right? Um, it ended up bouncing off the sonar shield and uh, falling in that compartment. But uh, anyway, back to this cooler. Um, got those gel packs in there, nice and cold. And uh, this thing will really you know, hold some fish. It's, it's perfect for this. It's actually good for the beach, too. Uh, I've used it on the beach when I'm uh, walking the beach for fluke in the summertime. I've got some green crabs in there. I didn't have enough Asians. I was afraid I would run out. So picked up some green crabs at the local tackle shop and uh, yeah, cut that one in half, stick the hook through, and uh, yeah, I'll stick another, uh, pull that shell off just because it's coming off and stick an Asian crab or two on there, give them something to eat. And you just saw the reel go over the side there into the water. Uh, that's something I like about the Tsunami Shield while I, I use it in the kayak is because, yeah, things like that happen. And, geez, for $100, you know, this thing's got a lot of seals in it. It really keeps the water out. So it's uh, a nice reel for this application. And in the video description, I'll put links to all the gear so I can get the exact model of that uh, cooler bag and everything, uh, the rod, everything else in there. And this is another one for the dinner table. So some anglers will tell you that you shouldn't touch your drag with a fish on. Um, I don't know why they say that. I prefer to have a, quite a tight drag for the hook set. I don't want drag slippage when I'm setting the hook. And that's, uh, I think a lot of that comes from bass fishing, trying to set the hook into larger bass. Um, but then I get into a situation, especially when a fish dies under the kayak, where I feel like I'm going to get busted off, so I'll have to back off from the drag a little bit. And that's what you're going to see here. Serious blackfish. So I'm looking for one fresh meal. Uh, I don't want to freeze any of this. And I've already got uh, some in the bag. I, I pretty much probably have a meal or close to it in there. And I'm not done fishing. Uh, this is a really nice one. I'm going to let this one go. Um, uh, like I said, if I end up with a second meal, I'm going to end up freezing. I don't feel like freezing it. I've got plenty of fluke in the freezer. And uh, I'm going to let this guy go. That's a really decent one. Uh, these fish, they're slow growing, so it's good to throw the big ones back.
So when I asked uh, Stanley Gola from SNS Bucktail t um, to make me this this jig, uh, originally I was thinking for porgies, and the hook he came up with works well for porgies, but you know it just became clear that it's an awesome blackfish hook. So yeah, uh, if there's any porgies around as bycatch, you're going to get them. You saw I threw that one back again. I've I've got fish in the bag there, and I really prefer blackfish to porgy, so uh, that porgy's going to get to go back. But, yeah, it's a great porgy jig. I've uh, done some good beach fishing uh, for porgies with that. Uh, here's another one that's uh, really running under the boat. All right, uh, I'm done narrating, and enjoy this last fish, and uh, thanks for watching. Oh, this is good. We'll get and break them off. Nice, not as big as I thought. Nice. 